and welcome to the final State of the Eagles for the 2017-2018 athletic year. David Moulton, Athletic Director, Ken Cavanaugh. It was a pretty good year, wasn't it? It was, and it goes quick. You know, before you know it, uh, we'll be back here doing this again in September. But I already um, saw the signs driving in for August 20th. for Eagle the Eagle Revolution? Student, yeah. Yeah, so absolutely. It does turn around yeah. uh, very quickly. Uh, we're going to use this show to put to bed uh, the entire spring sports season because we were right in amongst the conference championships the last time we talked, and also postseason awards, who's gone where and done what, and that sort of thing. So we're kind of going to put a bow on spring and 2018. Let's start with the spring sports. You know, softball was really good, and then the heartbreak of not getting in. Uh, the second best team in the sixth best conference in the country and not get an NCAA berth with a school record, what, 39 regular season wins. They are to be applauded, and yet everybody came away feeling disappointed. Yeah, it's really disappointing. In this very room, uh, the young ladies were here and ready to celebrate, which we all expected to be an at-large bid and uh, the first one. And uh, it's just uh, life isn't fair, unfortunately, sometimes. I think that uh, the disappointment for everybody is that the seniors don't get another chance. Right. And uh, um, the metrics that they're supposed to be using and how they use them, um, without using names, there was a team that we played twice, and we beat them both games, and we were ranked five spots ahead of them in the RPI, um, and they made it ahead of us. There was another team that played in the eighth strongest conference, and we're in the sixth, and they finished seventh in their regular season. They got beat on their home field in the quarterfinals of their conference tournament, and they became the fifth team to get chosen, and they were 12 spots behind us in the RPI. And there was a couple other examples, and there's always gonna be somebody who's not happy, but we really believe that it's a raw deal to what happened, to the extent that our commissioner, Ted Gumbert, and a lot of other commissioners are working on an overall paper to try to say, okay, committees should have latitude, but there should be some ground rules that they can't utilize um, to say the eye test. You always hear about the eye test. Well, you know, that's not fair because some teams have better eye tests because they're on TV more in certain more. sports. And right. then the other element is, as we've seen quite often in, in the ASUN and other conference like ourselves, you have a really good team coming back and nobody wants to play you. Sure. So you can't get games, and then they say, well, you don't have enough quality wins. Well, you know, give us an opportunity to play certain teams home and home on a regular basis, and we think we get our fair share. So, and it's not just us in our softball situation. It's across the board, uh, basketball, baseball. There's other sports that happen. And uh, again, the piece that's also difficult is that the, the Power Five conferences always have the majority of the votes in the room. Sure. And it just sent, it se always seems to be that the majority of the teams that make it in at large are power five teams. Now they are good and they have quality opportunities, but uh, we just need to balance it. Well, and you've worked at power five schools before, so you, you know, you've been on both ends of it, but at a non power five school, and really this is a small to mid-sized conference school, the bid means a lot more than it does to the seventh place team in a power five conference. I mean, it just does. The, if FGCU softball team had gotten the at-large berth, it would have been a really big deal. The Power Five school in particular just would have gone on with life. Well, in some cases, they some of them don't even expect they were going to get in. And uh, you know, we go back even to Chris Sales last year with us. Uh, we had a team that did everything they were supposed to do. They went on the road. They won a game at Clemson. They won a game at Wichita State. They won a game at Oklahoma State. Uh, Chris was the National Player of the Year, so he was a marquee player. That certainly uh, being on the, the mound for a first game in NCAA tournament would be a great pitcher for sure. them to showcase. Um, but because we were in our first year of Division One, we really were a known commodity at the time, um, we didn't get in. And they, we talked to the committee person who was representing from our region, and all the things he said we were supposed to do, I was on a call the next time saying, okay, these are the things you need to do. I said, check, check, check. We did all those things. And he didn't have an answer. Yet, as it turned out, a team in his conference got in as an at-large over us. So there, there's definitely subjectivity to it, but the more we can take that out for all student athletes, I think we're better off. And we'll move on to other things here quickly, but really you're 0 for 3. Because women's basketball two years ago, you know, Whitney senior year with Kenesha and all those seniors, and they ended up going to the NIT final, that was clearly an NCAA tournament. Well, especially team. again when we beat Auburn. Right. We beat Auburn by seven points and they got in. Now, if Auburn didn't get in, we'd say, okay, we didn't get in. Maybe there's another team that got in, but there's no head to head. Well, but we've had head to head now uh, at least two times and it's not worked well. Right. So, you know, 2010 baseball, 2016 women's basketball, 2018 softball. Do you have any confidence going forward? I mean, you know, 
when are you going to get the benefit of the doubt, if well, you know what I mean? Again, this uh, uh, grouping with Ke uh, Gumbert, our commissioner, we just actually got a paper that was shared uh, on Sunday that I got. I shared it with others who were both uh, FCS, which is the smaller football division one schools like, you know, uh, Montana and Youngstown State and um, schools of that nature, working with them and our schools in division one that aren't at the power five conferences that don't have football, um, that just have basketball, Gonzaga, uh, Creighton, schools like that, that we can work together um, to make sure that the fairness is done better than it has been. All right, let's move on. Baseball, you know, with three weeks left in the regular season, I was seeing prognostication in which FGCU was one of the last teams in, one of the first four out. And then, you know, sometimes it just happens where the bottom falls out in a season and you go from 31 and 12 and three weeks later your season's over. Yeah, we were 34th in the RPI, and as you said, we were certainly a team very much in at-large contention, and, and uh, it was just unfortunate, the exact opposite of last year, where at the end right. of the year, we got hot and went through the tournament and, and played well and beat Michigan and in the regional and so forth, but, um, you know, baseball's a funny game. You hit that line drive and they catch it, or you bloop it, and uh, it's a base hit. So, you know, the league was extremely strong this year. Sure. It was proven with Stetson not only uh, getting a regional, uh, but then winning and then playing in the Super Regionals against North Carolina. Jacksonville uh, gets a win and, and they make it as an at-large team and we had a couple other teams that were in consideration but um, you know it just didn't work out at the end but we had a good year we finished 83 in the RPI which is a, a good overall placement for a year that you didn't make the tournament but um, I think because of last year's successes and because of the great start we had this year um, it's disappointing but that's good programs if you don't make the tournament you should be disappointed. More on baseball coming up in just a bit. Tennis uh, both programs have become very strong. Uh, the women back-to-back -back years ace on regular season champs. Well, and rightfully so as the coach of the year again. Courtney has just done a phenomenal job um, in a position where uh, we win, we go up and beat uh, North Florida on their court to basically win the regular season. We were down 3 nothing, came back and won 4-3. Um, and just in a tough match in the semifinals, we got upset by Stetson. And then for the guys, they just had a year of injuries. We played to our level of capabilities when we were healthy and we lost 4-3 to, to a number 40. Princeton but it just didn't work out so hopefully we got the majority of that team back for next year and uh, the women I think almost have everybody back so we're already looking ahead to next year. Golf I know there were terrific individual performances on both sides this year and uh, the teams continuing to try to work their way up the ace on standings. Yeah, in particular on the men's side, it's one of the best conferences in the country. We had three teams the last two years that made the NCAAs, and this particular year, uh, two of them made it to the final grouping uh, of the regionals. They even had an individual both years from a fourth school. Uh, the best player at Lipscomb, and his name escapes me right now, but is one of the best players in the country and has already gone pro. So th there's extreme talent on the men's side, and we've been as high as number two before, and we'd like to get back in the mix. Uh, Grant Renegar uh, finished sixth in the uh tournament uh, for the ASUN and then on the women's side Madeline uh, Shirk finished in a position of I think she finished runner-up second uh, we had uh, Natalie was the uh, freshman of the year so we have a new player coming in but um, you just at the tournament we just had a tough situation where we had a bad first day under windy and rainy conditions and then the, the tournament got truncated from three days to two right. and we played really well I think we had the second best score and made a big turn up the the standings um, but we just didn't have enough the extra day who knows what would have happened but um, we're looking forward to next year. Second year in a row, I believe, with the number two uh, female player with uh, Megan from a couple seasons ago. All right, I know you love to talk academics. Well, we it? forgot beach in the spring too. That is true. And, uh, See, I always forget about yeah, that. Yeah, well, the beach. My and, bad. And uh, you know, uh, Coach Bosford, who coaches our indoor team and has done a great job with them, is in a position where uh, we went and we are still trying to build scholarships. It's the only sport that doesn't have general scholarships. We create a few out-of-state waivers, although most of our players are um, from the state of Florida. Um, a number of our players play indoor and they play and beach. Outdoor. And uh, this year they had a great season. They tied their program record 15 wins, finished second in conference, which is the best we've ever done. Uh, we wound up losing a tough match to UNF in the semifinals, but in the regular season we actually uh, had our first win against a top 20 team. We beat number 15 FAU. So uh, that's a wonderful sport to watch. Certainly uh, Brooke Youngquist Sweater, our Olympian, is a, a product, although she didn't play for us because we didn't have a team at the time, but uh, she certainly epitomizes what that sport is and uh, what we look forward to in the future. The academic part of the equation, which I know you love to brag about. We'll start with the Scholar Athlete of the Year Award. Four semifinalists, you end up picking a guy and a gal. 
It's, uh, it's the, one of the most enjoyable times of the year to just sit there and have a committee get a chance to meet some of the best young men and women that we've ever produced. And uh, picking a final recipient is extremely difficult. And this year uh, we had two winners. We actually had three winners last year, right. but um, there's really, there's no losers for sure. Um, two of the other semi-finalists that didn't get chosen or finalists um, were Kelsey Huff, our great uh, outfielder, all-conference player for softball, and uh, Summer Harris, who was a young lady in as a walk-on for the swimming team. First two years was just a participant. In her last two years, she was a champion uh, individually and multiple times uh, for a team that continues to dominate the CCSA. So those were our two finalists and the two uh, winners or co-winners. Um, Ashley Parks has had a phenomenal career uh, as the backliner uh, for a team that's now gone to the in-state tournament uh, six of the last seven years and eight straight championships. So Ashley was first team all region again um, and a tremendous student in the college of business. She actually graduated the year before, had a redshirt year due to an injury, came back and she got uh, voted this year in the graduate school at Luckard College of Business, the top student. Wow. So she's done things well beyond honors in athletics. So she was one of our winners and Mario Leone, who's pretty much epitomized uh, what we wanted out of the leader in our department, uh, local product from Gulf Coast High School who turned around and uh, went through an injury himself, uh, had a fifth year. He's already working on his master's and uh, Mario had his best year ever on the, the mound for us and combined with his successes and his leadership he was a two-year president of our Eagles Council Student Athlete Advisory Committee and been someone that we've used quite a bit in our representing the athletes in a lot of different ways whether it's in front of a camera or even speaking to a foundation board on campus so uh, we're very blessed and uh, now the responsibility is to get the next wave of leaders to replace these great seniors. I don't know you may want to hire that uh, number one student <laughs> in the business uh, department. All right uh, every oh, year. she's got a job already in, back in St. Louis. She's nah, already employed. We just need her out. now to join the Eagles Club. Um, every year it seems as if the grade point average gets higher. And that's not cliche. That's actually becoming fact. I, I think four semesters in a row I feel as if I've said the student athletes have outdone themselves this time around. Wasn't it 335? Yeah, it's the highest we've ever had. And it's hard because I talked to our academic staff, Kelly Brock, who is our associate AD for uh, academic affairs and oversees the uh, Hartley Academic Center, which itself is another big reason that I think we continue to do well when we have resources in particular since last August that we have for the kids to have a better opportunity to go in and study in a uh, confined area. So uh, that 335 broke our record of 333. Um, it's hard to break those kinds of records. At some point, you, you do level off. Um, but they the best part about it is we compare ourselves to how the rest of the university is doing. We use the words value added. Are we adding to what the university needs from an overall standpoint, athletically, academically, and uh, as ambassadors, community service? And when the student body was 299, that's a good benchmark. So how did you do? If we have a 335 and the whole school is a 34, well, we're kind of pulling things down, but when we're doing as well as we've done in the classroom, I think uh, the recognition to not just our student athletes, the coaches who recruit them and foster that environment, Kelly and her staff, uh, and even the general faculty. A lot of our faculty members really understand what our student athletes have to do when they go on the road and they work with them to make sure that they can get things done. Well, and you know, the athletic department with a 335, the student population with a 299, isn't this a constant theme that this has become a student athlete department very early in its existence that I hear, is it 16 semesters, 18 semesters? Yeah. How many in a row where you, your guys' grades are a little bit better than the people in the stands? Well, it, it's 18 semesters, and it's actually one of our stated goals being of the year, that we, as part of that value added, need to show um, that we're adding to the university's core, and the core certainly should start with academics. So um, there's a lot of pride. Uh, we do things and try to make sure that we not just honor individuals who do well athletically. We have an academic honors luncheon, which we talked about in an earlier show, um, that we have every February. If you have a 3.5 grade point average for at least two semesters here, cumulative GPA, not just one semester, uh, we're going to honor you. And we're we're going to find other ways to make sure we have a scholar athlete of the month that we do. Um, and I just think that's the way it should be because when, at the end of the day, there's going to be very few Chris Sales that are going to make enough money in their sport to take care of themselves the rest of their lives. They're all going to be out in their general workforce and having a good grade point average is not just the way you get a job, but I think it's the way it shows people that you can balance. Well, since we last spoke, however, there have been three FGCU student athletes who were drafted slash invited to major camps. You had the two baseball players, a couple of pitchers, one righty, one lefty. 
uh, Mario's eligibility was up, but Josh Dye, who, boy, when you think back to the last month of last season yeah. and how he came on and how well he pitched in that NCAA tournament game and then how well he pitched this year, uh, he and Mario both getting drafted. Yeah, and, you know, you selfishly don't want to lose people of eligibility. We would love to have Chris Sale for another year back sure. in 2011. Uh, but Josh is uh, someone who had a redshirt year, and uh, he's ready to go, and he got drafted by the Royals, who last year drafted uh, Julio Gonzalez as a shortstop, and uh, Mario got drafted by the Diamondbacks, and uh, um, Josh has decided he's signed and he's not going to come back, and, and Mario's deciding what he wants to do. It, it's neat when you have, as we talked earlier about Mario, someone who's so well-rounded, they may say, you know what? I think I'm going to move on with my life. And from what I understand, Mario is more leaning toward that direction than he is uh, going to, uh, to play minor league baseball. But uh, it's, again, to their credit. And uh, Rose Julian was invited to the WNBA Atlanta Dreams training camp. She was one of the last cuts. Uh, Nikki Collin, their head coach, former assistant here, you know, told me in no uncertain terms this was not a token invite by any stretch. Rose has skills. She thought she was lacking in, like, one skill set to be a WNBA player. And she said in large part because of the offenses she has played in. She thinks if she goes somewhere else and plays in one with more ball screens, she'll actually come back and she thinks she has a future or a chance to have a future in the WNBA. And Nikki told me that Rose had a very impressive camp. Well, Rose has worked really hard, you know, the last two years being uh, first team all conference. And, uh, you know, we've had a number of our players who had the opportunity. Whitney just signed again, I believe, in Greece, Whitney Knight. Um, and we've had uh, Carl's produce players that have the skill sets that coaches desire. They, they know what they're supposed to do and they get things done and, and uh, you know, it's an opportunity for them to play beyond FGCU. Uh, China Dow, someone I understand, had a good uh, combine when they were at the Final Four in China. We look to see play. So, um, you know, Rose, it'd be neat to see her get a chance to come back and play for Nikki. We certainly are rooting for the dream and in turn, um, you know, it's another way for us to show recruits that, you know, if you come here, uh, you can shoot a lot of threes, but you can also play beyond here as well. You know, a lot of times when somebody comes back from vacation, they come back with gifts or a tan or something. You went on a European vacation with the volleyball team. I have to admit, I don't see a tan and I don't see any gifts. So please well, at least give us a story or two. Well, I am Irish, so I have to make sure I wear sunscreen and hats and uh, everything else gotcha. like that. But um, yeah, Matt uh, Botsford just did a wonderful job creating the resources first to do our first ever trip overseas to Europe. We've had teams go to the Bahamas and uh, to some of the islands and stuff, but uh, it was 10 days uh, with the team and uh, it's a great start for next year for them to get preparation. Uh, there was 10 of the young ladies that went. We didn't have our incoming freshmen go. Um, we went to, uh, in 10 days, to five countries and played six matches. We started off in Budapest, we were there for three days, and, and that was a, a terrific time. Then we drove up. Uh, the only time it rained the entire time that we were there was when we were on the bus from Hungary to go to Austria, and we stopped in Vienna for four hours. And that was really neat because Lisa Zerdichka, our really talented women's basketball player, is from Vienna. So she's from there, she comes over and meets us. She shows a number of our players around the town square, um, and that was cool to see her. She was excited to know we were coming and, and made sure her sister and another friend came with her. Uh, we get back in the bus and then we went uh, three days to Slovenia, which was fun for me because my wife Mary is Slovenian. All of her grandparents came from there, although she doesn't know where they're from. I, I'm from Ireland. I took her to where my family was. She couldn't figure them out. But we had a great time in her homeland. And then uh, three days in Croatia in a port city in Pula that the kids were jumping off cliffs and into the, uh, the Adriatic Sea. And uh, we went to a wine uh, a tasting event that uh, was, was fabulous. And then after that, our last day was uh, uh, riding the gondolas of Venice and uh, being in, uh, in Italy and, and we flew home. But uh, it wasn't just the ability for us to see things and it wasn't just the ability to uh, practice for next year. The bonding of the team in, uh, in terms of memories for a lifetime. And if we can, f I'd love to be like a friend of mine has another school where we could get enough resources that we could guarantee all our student athletes once in their four years, they're going to go on a trip like that. Well, what a cultural experience that we could provide. So among other goals that we have for the department. Uh, I'd love to see that come to fruition, and, and uh, uh, that's just another thing I think would be great for be, be an FGC student athlete. Well, and oftentimes it does lead to team success, and the volleyball program is already you know one of the top two in the conference. But it oftentimes does lead to a team taking the next step. 
if you go back to Dunk City and the yep. Sweet 16 run, a lot of them, when they looked back after that season was over, said, you know, it actually all kind of came together during the summer. We went to the Bahamas mm -hmm. together. We became a lot closer than we were. And we also played some schools that we would never play until an NCAA tournament, yep. say. And we did really well. And they told us how good we were. And we came from there closer and also feeling hey, we're kind of better than we were last year. And they looked back afterwards and said, you know, it actually started in the summer before we beat Miami in the regular season, before we did what we did. And so oftentimes it does lead to future success. And the people, little pet peeve of mine, you know, think about when you were young, you know, an opportunity like that. You know, we don't begrudge students when they travel abroad and study abroad, why would we begrudge athletes when they go abroad well, and, and have an experience? And the hard part is because many of our athletes are two sport athletes. You know, there's seasons like basketball or swimming and others go across two semesters, so right. they can't take junior year abroad. Our daughter was very blessed. She went to Notre Dame and she had a junior year in London and she, during the course of uh, four months, or whatever she was over there, she visited 13 countries. What a cultural experience for her that we were very blessed that she was able to do. Um, so I think I think those are scenarios that people do forget that athletes do have commitments and time resources they have to do. They can't be like the general student and make decisions that others can because they have to take care of their sport. And quite frankly, you may never get to go back in your life. Oh, no and doubt. So just to have that moment in time is something you can treasure. All right. The um, you know sports awards for the year. You know, FGCU. Um, has on the women, the men, and then the overall ace on awards. Uh, you've been capturing these because the trophy case is full. The women won again, didn't they? Fourth time in five years and uh, in dominating fashion. Uh, and uh, it's something that uh, we, we are very proud of. And uh, we almost did it again on the uh, overall period. We, we were looking forward toward doing the same thing our fourth and five years from an overall standpoint. And we got out uh, uh, shined at the end by Kennesaw. To their credit, they had a phenomenal spring. And uh, if it was that close that if one sport in any of our sports, we were higher in one position or Kennesaw was lower in one position, we would have won. And uh, so, and it came down to the very last baseball game. Uh, no, uh, it's just unfortunate for Toe. The pressure kind of gets put on him in that regard because the baseball is the last team to finish. But we finished that last series with uh, Lipscomb and it was on the line for not only a, kind of a spot in the eighth center tournament, but it came down to that very last contest. If we beat Lipscomb, we win the uh, All Sports Trophy and go to the tournament, and unfortunately we didn't, and, and Kennesaw wound up winning. But uh, we'll look forward to next year going right back at it. It's also going to be even tougher because Liberty, who we'll talk about, is coming into the league, and uh, they've dominated their All Sports Trophy in the Big South. So, you know, that's an opportunity for everybody to take share that you finish in fourth or third instead of fifth or fourth, and in the end of the year, that helped the team. So um, it's collective, and we'd much rather be around a program where people push each other to be successful. I remember Andy, when he finally won that championship when we were uh, before the Sweet 16, and, his, and like it was the monkey off his back to finally be as successful as Carl and a lot of the other teams had been, and, and we like that positive peer pressure. Well, you mentioned Liberty. They're one of two new schools coming to the ASUN, South Carolina Upstate which is a bit ironic because FGCU and Upstate came in together, they did the exact same thing. They both went from D2, four-year provisionary together in the A-Sun, both had been in the conference at the same time. The Spartans are moving on. It looked like they were just gonna be replaced by North Alabama. It turns out the conference is gonna add and become a nine-team conference for the 18-19 season. North Alabama and Liberty, talk about both. Well, first from North Alabama, and in many sequences, I kind of look at them like Northern Kentucky. Went from Division II to Division I, been very successful in the Division II ranks, as ourselves and many other programs had been. Um, so we expect UNA to come in and, and give us an opportunity to build not only uh, a team that can add to the overall sense, and, and they'll grow. They'll be like we were. It takes, in some sports, maybe a couple years as they grow into Division I. But uh, they're a good location. Adds Alabama as another area, Northern Alabama, obviously, with their name, but they'll be two hours from Lipscomb and they'll be most likely a, in the long term a partner uh, with Lipscomb in Nashville being two hours from Florence. 
then you bring liberty in. Now, the fact of them coming in as late as they did did create a lot of challenges. We had already had schedules. We had to redo them. Uh, it's going to create some travel sequences for people to sacrifice for the coming year. But in the long run, uh, Liberty really adds, as I mentioned, with their all-sports trophy. They'll give us teams that will have good records in the non-conference portion that will help us maybe get more at-large opportunities. So uh, we're looking forward to it. They have phenomenal facilities. If you go to their website and you see what they have, uh, they're not lacking for much. They have no. Division One football. They went independent. That's kind of the reason where they decided to come they were in the big south they have football but not at the division one fbs level so um but the flames are going to come in we've played them in soccer we uh played them twice in the last you, three years you've been competing against liberty in swimming right you're yeah. both in the same conference yeah we're in the ccsa uh which is not run by the eight sun but we're combined with four other conferences so yes we are as a matter of fact they were already scheduled to host the uh the conference championship next year so we'll go up there for swimming uh and again it's an opportunity for us to extend ourselves they're in virginia we which uh, we have not spent much time, which we will now. So uh, we're looking forward to it. And if we want to be good, you know, we've looked at our women's basketball team in some years where we've gone undefeated. And, and, and other than Stetson and Jacksonville in recent years, we win games and we drop five, eight, ten spots in, a, in the RPI even after a win. Uh, Liberty will be at the top front with us and, and we'll have challenges, but we'll maybe have some great rivalries. I mean, in a nutshell, Liberty is very good for the A-Sun, but it's going to make life harder for you and others in the A-Sun because they've been the best program. You know, they've won those awards we just talked about in their conference. Yep. So from top to bottom, there's very few weak links in their athletic department. It's going to make life harder for you guys to fill up the trophy case, but it's better for the conference as a whole which big picture is better for FGCU. Yeah, and again, I think your the old expression, you're strong as your weakest link. And we've had, unfortunately, some teams at the back end that have hurt our better teams, ourselves, for uh, certain sports, and even some other teams. You know, Lipscomb's a quality team for volleyball has been that top team. And they did get an at-large uh, around three years ago. But it, it's it's something that we've got to continue to work on. Um, they have tremendous resources. Uh, they're, they're providing what they call full cost of attendance across the board to all their sports. Um, their endowment as a school, I think, is better than all the of the other schools combined. So, you know, we're going to have to compete with some resources, but we'll try to use our advantages, our location, our weather, and, and our winning tradition to can stay up with them. Have I missed anything? We did academics. We covered all the teams. We took on some major issues. Have we missed anything? No, it's been a full year, and it's also been a great first year with Dr. Martin. Um, Dr. Bradshaw did a wonderful job with us. I'm very uh, uh, honored that he gave me an opportunity uh, uh, a little over nine years ago. And then Dr. Martin came in this past year, and, and we didn't miss a beat. And, and uh, his background, having been at LSU and New Mexico State, um, certainly was advantageous for us with his leadership. And uh, we're looking forward as we get into 2018-19. It will be here before you know it. I know it's just looking at some of the schedules, the women's um, – volleyball team is going out to New Mexico uh, where our terrific scholar athlete and NCA student athlete rep uh, Amanda Carroll's from so they're going to play in a tournament out there and and soccer's got home games against uh, defending or not defending but previous national champion Wake Forest and the women's soccer team has Michigan so we're already into next year and already excited about it and that'll do it for State of the Eagles for 2017-18 quite frankly putting a bow on it all. And I think it's fitting that we do it here because if, you know, time kind of flies, but I think that, you know, this was kind of at the beginning of the year, wasn't August it? August 1st. And we also want to uh, give a shout out to Monica Case, who's behind the camera here, who's done a wonderful job keeping the two of us straight. And uh, we really appreciate all her efforts as well. And again, as we've stated before, uh, we'd love to have your feedback. Uh, there's information there. You can reach out to Monica. Let us know if there's some stories or something you'd like us to be involved with next year. But uh, we really appreciate all your support. Uh, God bless. Wings up and go Eagles. So until the fall of 2018, thanks for watching. Have a great summer.